Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. I've been using the eBay standard envelope for about five months now. I've done over 100 transactions with it and it is working out really great for me. So you can use this if you are selling postage stamps, coins, postcards, TCG cards, playing cards, sports cards, anything like that. The way that eBay controls that is by the listing type. And so when you set the type for your listing, I always use TCG single cards you can use TCG mixed lots if you're selling multiple different cards together. I would not use that. There's a known software bug on eBay where sometimes if you complete a sale of an item listed under TCG mixed lots, it will not let you choose eBay standard envelope as your postage option when you go to buy postage. So I just always list everything as TCG single lots, even if they are technically a mixed lot. So you can sell cards up to $20 and ship it this way. Or if somebody buys multiple items from you that each qualify, you can combine them up to $50 of value. And there is an option to combine shipping under, I believe there's a button for bulk shipping. I've only used it like twice, so I'm not that familiar with it. Now, this originally rolled out in 2021. And if you use this early on and you gave up on it because it was a disaster back then, I would urge you to give it another shot. I have read the horror stories in the help section on eBay and their user forums. And man, it was a disaster apparently back then in 2021. There were all kinds of software bugs. Well, there were software bugs that eBay hadn't fixed yet. I mean, there's still software bugs all over eBay, but there were issues with overcharging for postage with additional phantom charges for postage, just all kinds of problems. And then the USPS had not fully integrated the shipping option into their computer systems. And so because of the way that it actually gets tracked through the USPS system, apparently there was a very, very high rate of failure of tracking data getting either recorded at all or sent onwards to eBay. And so then buyers figured out that they could just scam the sellers because there was no tracking information. So that was a big problem early on, but I have not had any of those issues using it in the second half of 2022 and early 23. So again, if you use this early on and, and just got sour on it, give it another try. So the issue that this fundamentally solves is how do you send cheap junk cards to a buyer and lower the chance of getting scammed because there there are still some scams out there that people can do but one of the simplest ones had always been if you sold some cards on ebay and you ship them in a plain white envelope with no tracking you just put a stamp on the envelope you shipped it to the buyer then he might just claim that he never got it and there was no way for you to prove that he did and he did not have to prove that he didn't. And so eBay would always side with the buyer against the seller, no matter what reputation each side might have. And so this helps fix a lot of that. And in fact, I haven't had a single problem in over 100 transactions with a person making any type of, well, claim at all, much less fraudulent claim. So, you know, USPS, we like to, we like to rib on them for being terrible for being lazy and everything. And yeah, they, they kind of suck, but they're not as bad as you think. You know, they handle 170 million pieces of first class mail every day. If they really were losing that much mail, then they would have to have a whole system of dumpsters to take away the mail that they're supposedly losing. So most of the time, if you put a letter in the mail for USPS, it will get to its destination. And that's what was so frustrating for people who were selling cards and shipping them in plain white envelopes. They knew that the fraud rate was much higher than the actual rate of USPS losing mail. And this really helps alleviate a lot of that. So the way that these get tracked through the USPS, they don't get tracked every stop along the way, like something like if you send a bubble mailer or a box or a parcel. Those will get tracked more often. These get fewer tracking updates. So essentially you buy the postage and a serialized label gets created. You print it on your envelope. And then the first time that you'll get an update is when the envelope reaches the station basically above your local post office. So the first kind of bigger sortation center. It'll get scanned there and it'll be 
it'll be uh, its status will change to accepted slash in transit. And then there can be some different location updates along the way. Like if you were going to send it all the way across the country, you would get a couple different updates from different places along the way. But then at some point, it gets close to its destination. It passes through the final sortation center that it's going to hit, and it gets, it gets set for out for delivery. And this can be kind of confusing to your buyers because if they're just diligently watching the tracking updates, they'll see out for delivery, but then they won't actually get the letter for another one or two days. But eventually it'll show as delivered. Now it may not have actually been placed in their post office at that point. And I've had times when I've bought cards on eBay that have been sent using the eBay standard envelope. And I'll see, I'll get a text message from eBay that says this has been delivered. And then it it actually takes another two days before the postman puts it in my in my mailbox because it had simply passed through the final sortation center it was going to go through. So the tracking is, it's, it's a little more coarse than you're used to. It's not the kind of high quality granular tracking. But the point is you get tracking attached to this and you get the USPS attesting that, hey, we delivered the package. And that's really what cuts down on the fraud. So you can buy this in weights up to three ounces. So for the one ounce weight, you can ship four cards. And the way I'm going to show you how to package them here in a minute, it comes out to 57 cents of postage and total the postage plus the supplies, the envelope and everything is about 70 cents. So you could ship up to four cards for 70 cents of cost. Now, if you move up to the two ounce weight, you can fit about 10 cards into the envelope. And again, with the supplies and the method I'm gonna show you in a minute, it'll cost you 81 cents in postage and a dollar and three cents total for supplies and the postage. Above that, again, you can go into that three ounce range. I've never had to do that. And you'll run into some issues cramming all those cards into a plain white envelope. And I know, man, there are some people who have have no hesitation about cramming 20 or more cards into a plain white envelope. It's not for me. You do your thing. And if you take those kind of costs for shipping and handling, selling a single card on eBay, if you price it for three and a half dollars after your normal eBay fees, your fixed fee, your, your market fee, and then those real shipping and handling costs, a $3.50 sale will make you about $2.06 of net profit. Now that does not obviously include the cost of the card that you're selling, but if you've already got that card in your hand, it came out of some other transaction you did or whatever, then selling it for three fifty dollars nets you $2.06. You could go down to selling it for two and a half dollars That will net you $1.18 and people will start to bicker about whether or not that's worth your time. Let them bicker. You just do your own thing. Up at the maximum, again, this goes up to $20 for a single a single card or a single listing. If you sell for $20, again, fees, shipping, everything else, you'll make about $16.5. So it's a really reasonable way that the costs are not very high. It's not much worse in price than just a regular first-class stamp, but it gives you a very coarse kind of tracking. So I'm going to show you how I put these together. So for just a single card, just drop it in a sleeve, drop it in a top loader. And no, I do not worry with turning them upside down because I'm not going to put a piece of tape on here. It doesn't matter if I'm just doing a single one. Put it in the team bag. The nice thing about the team bag is, you know, if it gets in contact with a little bit of moisture along the way, it won't ruin the card. And if it's enough to get through all of this to the card, it's going to have destroyed the envelope and the invoice and everything else. So then I just fold this up. And here's an important thing. Do not put this over here or over here. Put it in the center. Because when this goes through inside the envelope, when it goes through the sortation machines at the USPS, it needs some, it needs some flexible paper for the rollers to grab onto. And if this is all the way over to the side and that hits the roller, it can jam up the machine. And then the, the USPS employee who has to clear that 
is going to mark that this has to be um, hand processed. I forget the term for it. But essentially what will happen is then when it makes it to your buyer's house, the postman will get out of his truck, come up to your buyer's porch and demand an extra 30 or 40 cents or something of postage in order for him to get his card. Then he's going to come on eBay and be irritated. Fold this up. And then you just pop it in your envelope. That's it. Okay. So I'm not going to demonstrate that because I do want to show you one other thing with this in a minute. So that's how I do just a single card. If I'm doing two cards, I just pop the second card in a sleeve and I put it in the same top loader. If I'm doing three cards, then I start to put them together in a sleeve. I just put them back to back, put them in one sleeve. And, you know, I would have a second card in a single sleeve and I would put all that in a top loader. Still fits nice in just a regular top loader. Four cards, same thing. I do two double carded sleeves, put that in a top loader. That's where the top loader starts to get pretty tight, but it works and it's not going to damage the cards of that. Beyond four cards, you've got to start using two top loaders. And here's the thing about that. When you use two top loaders in here, you need to place them this way, okay? now. With a normal number 10 envelope, that will just barely fit. You see how the envelope is basically as tall as the top loader is. So it'll just barely fit. And again, when you put each of these in their separate team bag, you're going to have this little overlap. I, would, I always try to put the rigid parts of the top loaders right up against each other, and then I tape them down to the, to the page so they can't slide around and leave that gap here and leave that gap here so that the rollers on the sorting machines at the post office can grab these without messing them up. Now, the other thing you can do is um, sometimes when I ship five cards, I will put, let's say I already had four in this team bag, I'll take card number five and I'll just throw it in the team bag outside of the top loader. And again, card number six, you can do that. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It just depends. And, you know, anything over four cards, you're going to be going up to the uh, two ounce postage level already. So you can decide, you know, top loaders are what, seven cents. So you can decide it's probably worth seven cents. But when you start to get up beyond eight cards, let's say you've got two top loaders. Each one's already got four cards in it, but your order is 10 cards. I will just take my last two cards. I will single sleeve each of them and... I will just put them in the team bag on top of the top loader. I put them face down so that if anything hits it on the way, the damage is on the back of the card, not on the face. I've never had a problem. I've never had anybody complain that the cards got damaged in processing, that they arrived uh, damaged at all. They weren't packaged right. They got wet. I haven't had a single complaint like that in over 100 transactions using this. So it's worked out great. The other thing about this is, you know, you, you'll get a, a message that you sold a card on eBay and then you can just click over to the tab that has your sales, refresh it. You can print up the order sheet. You can print up the envelope. You just set your printer to print number 10 envelope, put them right through. I have never had a problem with USPS accepting this in this format. Not a single run rejected yet. So you can print those up real quick, pick the card out of your box, put them together, tape them down, fold them, seal the envelope, and it takes about two minutes. So, and that includes walking halfway across the house to the printer to pick up the papers off of the printer. So the various ways that um, this can kind of fail, again, I haven't had many problems with it, but things to kind of look out for, I guess to say, instead of failing. Military addresses in the U.S., APOs and FPOs, the tracking will typically terminate in Chicago. It'll go to Chicago, it'll get scanned one last time, and then I guess it, I maybe all APO, FPO mail centralizes in Chicago and then gets uh, air shipped all over the world. So you won't get a final update. You won't get an out for delivery scan, but I've, I've had buyers who have still gotten their cards through APO, FPO shipping, and they leave positive feedback even though the tracking information never completes. So it's getting there, it's just the tracking information will never complete. And you don't really have to worry about your buyer being a scumbag because the USPS has already attested that the envelope was in their system. So 
basically you're off the hook at that point. Um, you know, you have a long history of actually packaging things up, actually sending them. And then if the buyer complains and they're an APO FPO that never completes the tracking information anyway, eBay treats that as the USPS loss the envelope. And then they initiate whatever kind of insurance action they need to through USPS. Because again, this is insured up to $20 for a single a single item or $50 for uh, multiple items together. Once in a while, I've had ones that just not being APO, FPO, they still don't get destination scans, but the buyer eventually leaves feedback. So that can happen. You can have uh, origin scans, but um, you'll have an origin scan. You'll never have any update scans but the buyer gets their card and leaves feedback. So there's all these kind of weird things that can happen. I did have one case where I never got an origin scan. I dropped the card off, or I thought I did. I dropped the card off at the post office. It never even got an origin scan. I went back, I looked through my inventory, and I audited that to make sure the card was at least gone from my inventory, and it was. The buyer never got it, but he never said anything. So I don't know if the card disappeared. You know, did the guy unloading the mailbox at the post office pocket it because he saw, oh, eBay standard envelope, I'll take that. Or maybe it got to him and he never said anything anyway. That's kind of the one edge case where you would still be vulnerable to a greater chance of fraud because the buyer could say, oh, the card was never even sent, see? They bought postage and then the card never got into USPS's system. So that's really kind of the only vulnerable situation. Keep that in mind. But overall, like I said, I haven't had any big problems with this. I haven't had any chargebacks. I haven't had any anything that even looked like fraud, much less I could, could definitively say was fraud with this. It's been working great. And like I said, if you got sour on this in the past, give it another shot because it's working out fine. And if you've got a lot of cards you think you'd like to sell, but you've just kind of always been wary of the fraud from Rudy's old stories of the days when he sold basically scores of, of uh, cards a day through plain white envelopes, don't be afraid of that anymore. Come over to eBay and use eBay standard envelope to do it. Now, the cool thing is since eBay bought TCG Player last summer, Hopefully at some point TCG player will get this envelope and that I think would really, really be a nice bonus for TCG player. Let me know your experience, guys, what you think, how it's going for you. Otherwise, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.